A friend asked me the other day, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear Jesus' words, I am the light of the world? <laughs> I have to confess on some days, perhaps even many days, the first thing is, well, that may be true, but today all I see is a flicker, a candle in the wind. Then I remember that even on the darkest days, just a flicker of light can take us by surprise and light our way in the darkness. In Matthew's dark story about Herod's bloody assault on Bethlehem's babies, the murderous plot came about because the Magi, Persian astrologers, came to Herod and asked, where is the born king of the Jews, Greek, Otekthes Vasilevs? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Matthew Riley calls Jesus the born king, <laughs> rather than the kind of king Herod was, a puppet king installed by the Roman occupational army and holding his power at the whim and behest of Caesar. Notice Matthew's magi were not looking for the star. They were looking at the stars, and the star found them, surprised them, captured them, claimed them. It wasn't what they were looking for. It turned out to be what they were looking for. Sometimes a light surprises. Some years ago, I was in the Holy Land with a group of seminary students. One afternoon on our way home to the center in Jerusalem where we were ensconced for the month we were there, I decided to detour to Beit Gurin and visit the famous bell caves of Marissa, an ancient limestone quarry, the bell caves, nearly 800 of them, were used in the Byzantine and early Muslim periods by Arabic-speaking Christians who hid out there to worship in secrecy and security. The caves are now peppered with Christian graffiti and drawings, mostly in Arabic, betokening uh, the now silent witness to the faith of long-departed brothers and sisters maintained in dark and difficult days. It was January the 6th. <laughs> when we were there, Epiphany in the Western Church, but Christmas in the Eastern. And so I suggested that since the caves provided excellent acoustics, we should sing Christmas carols. One of our students started and we all joined in. Then during the singing of Silent Night, a couple of young Arab men walked into the cave, apparently drawn by our singing. I started to get a little nervous. We were off our published itinerary, and no one really knew where we were, I thought to myself, you know, they could waste us here, and it would be days before anybody found out. But just then, one of the young men started singing with us in Arabic, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. They were Christians, Palestinian Christians. And right there in the bell caves of Marissa, cultural divides were crossed, prejudices were swallowed up in community, and Christian brothers and sisters joined voices and hands and hearts, singing praises to the light. The darkness, tried though it may, could not put out. Sometimes a light surprises. C.S. Lewis said it, for most of us, the door to heaven opens behind us. <laughs> William Cooper sang it. Sometimes the light surprises the Christian while he sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. When comforts are declining, he grants the soul again a season of clear shining to cheer it after rain. Sometimes a light surprises. Till next time, take care. God bless.